Welcome to Mindset, Mood and Movement, a systemic approach to human behavior, performance and well-being. How psychological, emotional and physical health are all connected. In this episode, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience to help you overcome a challenge that you might be facing in life, health or work. Hello and welcome. Today's episode is a bit more of an education, I guess you could say about me, my philosophy, the work that I do and and how it impacts the people I work with. So as you probably guessed from the podcast name, Mindset, Mood and Movement, they are the spaces I work with. Um, But it could sound a bit weird and esoteric and you may not know. So I want to expand this. One of the things I want to share is that our world, whether we see it or not, is really uh, a lot of specialism, a lot of fragmentation. We've got people who might work on the body, say a physio, if you have a physical problem. You might have uh, a need to see a doctor if you're not feeling well. You might think, well, gosh, I'm I'm really struggling. I'll, I'll go see a therapist to help me. Um, what we've got is we've got these specialized fields, and there's a place for them, but we've got these specialized fields that often don't talk to each other. They're not connected. They, they, they're working in the silos. And what I see is that this doesn't really serve people that well when we're working on growth, personal development, and, and all the stuff that makes us being a human being, how we think, how we feel, and what's happening in our body. And this is the premise that, that I've been working with. Now, you, most of us are used to the, I guess, the description of ecosystems with our current climate crisis. Every day we're, we're hearing about ecology and ecosystems breaking down and these sorts of things. And I guess a really, it's easy to think about ecosystems being as trees and plants and rivers and nature and so forth. But what I see is that our human system, you, me, everyone, we are actually an ecosystem of ourselves. So we have our mind, all the think, thought, all that inner stuff. We have our mood, our emotions, our feelings, our sensations. That then blends into our body. So how we move, how we're living, how we're acting, how we're moving. And these three elements are what I find fascinating to look at them as one continuous ecosystem. Now, when we think about mind, Let's elaborate. So mind is all the stuff that's going on with him. It's how you think. It's the stuff you say to yourself in your own mind. It's your belief structure. It's who you say you are, your personality. Um, it's your fears. It's your backstory. It's all that psychological uh, structure. Uh, and we all have it. Some of us have got you know, elements of it that need work. Some of us have got things that we can grow into. But that's a really big part of, of one system, the mind system. When I talk about mood, we're talking about affect is a technical word for regu- for emotion and affect regulation, regulating emotions. And emotions are, we can cross them over from the mind into the body. So we've got how we feel about something, but they're all built on chemicals, chemical messengers and signals and stuff around our body. And our mood is a really fundamental quality and experience that tells us how we're doing in life, whether you're feeling be sad, stressed, fearful, whatever that is, is an emotional charge to our thinking. So we have the emotional layer. And then we have our physical, our physical body itself. How well do you feel? How much energy do you have? How strong are you? How fit are you? Uh, how many aches and pains have you got? All the things that we, we all experience a different degree. And can that be worked on? Can that be changed? And then the question is, how is that physical structure creating an experience in our emotional structure so is our body in a way that's helping our emotions be well or not or regulated or not and then how does that affect our mind the eye the personality so when we look at mind mood and movement and we look at the the links uh, we can think of this as like a venn diagram with the circles overlaying they can be looked at in separate spaces but we need to look at the connection and there is so much power when we look at the three and to give you an example and how this came about so I worked in I've done a lot of different things I've business for 20 years or so I've done lots of different things but in the last decade decade and a half uh, yoga was a big part of my life and I was teaching yoga like a lot maybe four or five classes a day and private clients and lots and lots of stuff I would work with people and they'd come to my practice 
and we do a lot of physical work. And I see great change. I'd see their, their facial muscles relax. I'd see their body change and become more supple and become stronger. And they'd normally leave the studio uh, feeling great. And they'd come back the next week looking stressed. I'm like, wow, <laughs> did you not? could you not take some of this forward? Um, but then, of course, on speaking to people deeper, what I found was so much of what was going on was in the mind. So the yoga practice was brilliant. It was helping in a large extent, but it wasn't the totality. There was some stuff missing in how people saw the world, how they thought about themselves, how they dealt with problems and pressures and that sort of thing. And some years later, I then got involved in psychotherapy. It drew me and I did a, an amazing postgrad in contemporary psychotherapy. And that led me on the path of the mind and perhaps more into the emotional space. Oh, so I set up practice and was working in that for a good few years. And what I'd see is that we work on stuff. People come in with anxiety, they come up with stress, come up with pains and traumas that needed healing of some kind. And we wouldn't necessarily talk about the body. We wouldn't necessarily get movement involved so much. We wouldn't look at how the, the, the two were related. We did a lot of talk and think work, but we wouldn't really go into the physical, right, the actual movement and creating a program around that. So over the years, I've been looking at how these things weave together. Now let's segue into a little personal story. In terms of my mind, I used to be uh, all over the place and really struggle with how I thought about myself, what I believed, all this uh, internal narrative. And then the more I looked at how that internal narrative was, whether it was doubt, whether it was low self-esteem, the, these kind of things that was happening for me, imposter syndrome, <laughs> I've had the lot basically. Working through them started to change how I felt, hence the emotional realm. But it also started to change how I felt about my body and how I would move. And then when we look at the emotional side, so another piece of this which changed my world was getting into yoga and then breath work. Because I started to learn about how breathing affects us, how breathing directly affects the, uh, the conversation in the autonomic nervous system, like what the body and the brain are talking to each other. Then I started to understand I could change my mood by using things like breath work and yoga to some degree. And that changed how I was thinking. So I started getting more and more interested in this weave of thinking and feeling. And then I got into yoga big time, really got into a lot of movement. And, and I hadn't been doing this years before. I've been in a photographer for many years, really into the body and movement of all different natures. And, and I started to see how that was affecting how I felt, how I thought. And then I took that further on and went to strength and conditioning work and, and the whole palette of physical movement to see how they all come together. Now, what I found over the years, and this is a personal story, is that so much is built on misunderstanding. So I have an autoimmune condition, and this autoimmune condition is, you could look at it as a medical condition, and that's often what it's called. It's called ulcerative colitis. In the medical community, we'd call it inflammatory bowel disease. Doesn't work for me, because I understand how things work together. So yes, I have a specialist. Mostly I'm in what's called in remission, and things are pretty good. But this whole physical expression of the uh, autoimmune condition isn't physical only. Now, when I was looking at work from people like Gabor Mate, who's done loads of work on trauma, uh, gone through therapeutic work myself, a lot of it, started to look at its origins. Where did this start? How did my immune system learn that it needs to attack itself? It's a crude analogy, but that's what we say in autoimmune. And it all started back in a traumatic event when I was a, a teenager in a very difficult time. And, and the therapeutic work helped me track that back to that place when I felt helpless, when I had no other option. And when I, of course, I didn't know, but my nervous system decided to encode that as a traumatic experience, one where I had no choices and I had to freeze. And that was the start of this autoimmune condition. Now, there's a lot of stuff around this. It's a theory, so we need to be careful. And I would never suggest that you don't have a medical professional. But what I do invite you to do, this is an example that's mine and it's worth looking at how the physical expression of this disease or dis-ease was built on a psychological emotional platform and now I've dealt with the physical through health fitness uh, nutrition uh, I've also dealt with it from psychological emotional generally I'm in a very good state so this is the interesting thing that interests me about how we can look at these places together I, another example, again, I'll keep it very personal, so it's undeniable. 
I used to have a lot of anxiety and uh, struggle with, uh, you know, really worrying about things and really anxious and sort of hyper. And I just didn't realize that I was also dysregulated. I was mouth breathing. Uh, I was chest breathing. And learning about how if we breathe the nose and diaphragm and all these effects from the physical effect of breathing affects our mood. Studying things like polyvagal theory by Stephen Porges helped me understand that if we are dysregulated, i.e. the nervous system's in stress response or a shutdown response and you can't move out of it, then of course your thinking is going to be one of, uh, I'm not safe, I am uncertain, I feel anxious. So by working on the, the breathwork side and the body side that came to that, could I start to then understand that my anxiety situation needed the emotional regulation, it needed things like breathwork and needed my body to function well so that my mind could regulate the thinking as much as my body could regulate the emotions. So that's a really, really showed me so much about those connections. And then physical. Well, um, I'm not a young uh, person anymore. I'm north of 50. But I train pretty much most days. I do heavyweight training, sprint training, plyometrics. I do lots of sport. And, and this hasn't always been like this. It's taken quite a long way to be able to get to this, this level. And it's, it's an ongoing process. But what I've found is that as a midlife adult, my body is stronger. My muscles work well. My connective tissues are feeling robust. Obviously, I still do yoga, so that keeps me very subtle and mobile. And all of this physical, let's say, shape and structure of the body is allowing me to think and feel in a different way. There's nothing worse than your aches and pains where you feel tired and you don't have energy. And by if you run a business, you don't want any of that because it's just draining. So... It's not about some utopian, like, is a perfect place, but understanding these pieces, mind, how it affects us, mood, and what we can do, and our, and our body and our movement, and how that might play into our experience of life, has absolutely fascinated me and brought me into this worldview of we are an ecosystem. So if we want change, we want confidence, we want to overcome anxiety, problems, our difficult backstory. Working on all three, looking at all three to the right measure is a powerful way of really dealing with personal change, personal development. And, and then when you think about if you're working on you, Neil, you get your own internal ecosystem working well. That affects the wider ecosystem. So your family, partner, children, friends, family, whatever you have there, your work, your business, your community. So it's, it's sort of this fractal, what they call it, fractal dynamics, um, this sort of expression of things that, that repeat and replicate in wider uh, spheres and, and expressions. If we look at that, that's a really wonderful way of seeing ourselves as connected to ourselves, mind, body, all the way through, to our families, to our communities, and perhaps to the world around us. So that's a little journey through how uh, I see the world, how I work with the world, and a lot of my own personal, I'm my own experiment, <laughs> all the way on my own experiment. But a lot of people I've worked with have also benefited from this process in many, many ways, which of course I'll share stories in the forthcoming episodes. But I hope that's given you a, a clearer picture of how mind, mood, and movement work as an ecosystem, how it can affect us in different ways, and how it can be worked as a totality. And I hope it stimulates your thinking if you've got challenges, whether it's mental. It feels more emotional, whether it's more physical. Wondering and questioning, like, okay. So if we if we put that lens on yourself for a second, how might that help you? How, how might that help you see the world a little differently? Rather than thinking I've got a back problem and I'm feeling tired and grumpy. Can you look at it all? Can you see if there's an emotional connection or physical? Or is there a belief connection? And as you start to see them, then see how they're affecting each other. So, dear listener, I hope that was useful. Um, it's a, it was a short dive into what's a very uh, long journey in my life, but I trust it's given you some clarity on, on, on how I work. And the premise of the podcast is to share this worldview. It works for me. It works for the people I work with. It may well work for you. So if this is vibing with you, then do listen to the forthcoming episodes. And uh, as always, if you want to reach me, uh, I'm always welcome to to connect with people and to to share thoughts and ideas. Thank you so much for listening. 
If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe. And if a friend would benefit from hearing this, do send it on to them as well. If you would like to get in touch yourself, then you can go to my website, which is saljeffries.com, spelled S-A-L-J-E-F-F-E-R-I-E-S, saljeffries.com. Hit the Get In Touch link, and there you can send me a direct message. If you'd like to go one step further and learn whether coaching can help you overcome a challenge or a block in your life, then do reach out and I offer a call where we can discuss how this may be able to help you. Until the next time, take care.